and uh, talk about where we go from here and where we are now and how to assess what we've done, what we've won, and what's in front of us from my perspective. <laughs> so I'm Janice Matthews. I'm the director of 911truth.org. I live in beautiful Kansas in the United States, out in the woods with three children still at home and uh, about 35 chickens. And, uh, it's great. And we have woods in Kansas. It's not all Dorothy and Wizard of Oz wheat fields. But. So it actually looks a lot like your coastline here, only all the trees and flowers are different. Uh, anyway, that's where I'm from. I got involved in 9-11 Truth Movement in 2003 in the summer. I went and heard Bill Douglas speak. I already had some questions, but mostly I was concerned about uh, the war, I mean, issues of, of the war. And when 9-11 happened, I lived in a tiny town in Kansas called Little Sweet in Lindsborg, Kansas. And I had a lot of friends whose husbands were air pilot trainers <coughs> with the Air Force. And it immediately hit me that we were going to go blow people up, and uh, that's what was going to come from this. And all of those husbands and fathers, I had just had a baby too, so it was all about mothering. And they were going to war, and I thought, oh my God, we're going to do it again. And I remember the Gulf War, and sitting, actually I was squatting in a recliner as we were blowing people up, and it was just awful. And that was the first thing that came to my mind, not, um, you know, all those bastards did it. How are we going to blow people up? We've got to stop this. So uh, I had some questions, but nothing that made me uh, assume that there was... I, I didn't pay any attention to it. It's really what it was. So then I went and I heard Bill Douglas talk, and I had more and more questions developing over time. And when he got to the information about the put options, and that at that time we thought of somewhere around $5 million were made betting, specifically against the two airlines involved, the insurance companies and the reinsurers involved. And then, of course, that developed more, and we found out more and more, and more money was made. And I came from a family where my grandfather had started a bank. And in the late 70s, uh, the mafia took my grandfather's bank with the help of the Kansas Banking Commissioner and uh, killed my great uncle, uh, kidnapped my grandmother, and stuck her in a closet. And the banking regulators came in and went line by line through every penny in that bank, trying to find something. And uh, I knew how much they knew about financial transactions. So when I found out someone made all of this money on it, the SEC wasn't looking at it. No one had been held accountable. Like, at a core level, the fact that people made money off of this, just, it's, it's just awful. I mean, right? It's, everybody has that response. But then that there wasn't any investigation, that there wasn't any information, I thought, this is nonsense. I know how much information they have on this because I know what my grandfather had to go through. So that was how I became involved, and that was I had attended this event of 800 and some people in Kansas City back in early 2003, which is kind of significant. There were that many people interested in it then. So we formed an organization called um, September11th.org, the 911 Visibility Project. Um, Seattle, Washington, in the far northwest, and Kansas City held an event the day after Thanksgiving, which in the United States is the busiest shopping day of the year. We made huge four by six uh, placards that said, support the 911 families, demand a new investigation. <coughs> so in the very early days, that was, was a pretty reasonable thing to ask. Almost everybody wanted to support the family members, or they felt compassion for them. And there were a lot of people really involved because it's a reasonable thing to ask for. Uh, so that was in November of 2003 when that started. And by the next spring, we had about 47 groups that were starting to come together all over the U.S., a few foreign countries, other countries. Uh, then in the spring of 2004, there was a conference held with Carol Rie in the Bay Area Group in California. And out of that came the vision and the board and the, the beginning genesis of 911 truthorg and the focus of that was that we knew there was tons of great research being done everywhere. There were activists everywhere. There had already been a conference in Berlin. There was information in France. There were all these things. So not only truth.org was born because we needed somewhere, some sort of conduit, so that people would know that all this great stuff was being done, as well as my focus, which was networking, to let people find, help people find each other. So they came home. I wasn't at that conference. I was home with four kids then, and single, and didn't get to travel anywhere. And they called me and said, would you do outreach for us, because you've been doing that with the Visibility Project. So hence the birth of truth.org and we've been going since then. 
and it's developed and grown. Um, I was going to, at some point, I'll show you the grassroots list page at my own shift over. I have some um, you know, technical impairments. <laughs> and I manage the website. I post everything to it. We have a back-end PHP coder, but so I've really overcome <laughs> some of those things. So that's where we come. Since then, of course, we know that these, all of these groups have sprung up. So not only have we had conferences all over the place, we've had Truth Action start, We Are Change started, architects and engineers have started, political leaders for 9-11 Truth has formed, uh, media professionals for 9-11 Truth, firefighters for 9-11 Truth, other groups I'm not thinking of at the moment. But all these things um, have sort of uh, sprung from the energy generated by this umbrella network. And, and the reason I say all that um, I'll show you this grassroots page. This is the main website, I mean, the, this is nylonthetruth.org, and I have the calendar, which is something everybody is, the calendar is available to anybody worldwide to use. You can post it yourselves for 9-11 related events as part of this just facilitating people's activism. So here's our grassroots organizers page, which is people who either are running a group or would like to run a group. There are 40-something states. Sorry, that's hard to see. I don't do this often. Uh, and then all of these other countries at the end. And so the come of it is these police groups. Now, you know, 9-11 uh, in Australia started as a Truth Action group, September 11th group. There are weird change groups everywhere. So we really are everywhere, and um, uh, and I'm going to talk about that later because um, you know we're all really different. Our cultures are different. Our and, and that's different in the United States. What works in Kansas doesn't work in New York, doesn't work in Houston, Texas, etc. And that's something that we should keep in mind. So we started out supporting the families' demands for investigation. Uh, then the investigation was finally brought about, and we were demanding a real investigation. We thought. Then the report came out, so then we were rejecting the false investigation and then all of the recommendations that came from the commission. And uh, now we're, you know, that we've called for a new investigation and we're sort of at the point where we're really disseminating the information, is my sense of it, as far as 9-1 specific information. Uh, and I we listed a few accomplishments of the movement the other night and it's, a lot of it's very intangible. So, like, we have no idea how many millions of DVDs have been disseminated. You know, we don't know how many, I don't know, how many millions of people have been talked to, you know, or have been listened to, hopefully. Um, it's also been a real individual evolution for a lot of us. We came into this, most of us, with no organizer training, no foundation funding, no offices, no technology understanding. I mean, this is, I, I will say this is the, finest example of people feeling so passionate that they insist we're going to make something happen in spite of every obstacle and we're going to learn how to do it and make it happen. Absolute media blackout until 2006 when they quit ignoring us and decided to fight us. You know, government blockage, media blockage, fun funding, no funding, and yet, look at us. That is phenomenal, really. The majority of people around the world, according to polls, etc., don't believe, at least, don't believe what we were told. And more and more, they're starting to see why it matters. But we've reached the majority of people with our information in spite of massive government propaganda, media blackout, and no resources. And that, like, we've done great. And that's everybody that's made that happen. We've had international poll results. If you look at a Wikipedia page, just type in 9-11 uh, polls. All around the world, it's, it's just phenomenal. 80,000 New Yorkers signed a petition recently to call for a citizen's initiative to be placed on the ballot, asking for a new investigation. Of course it failed. New York City's never had a citizen's initiative on their ballot. But the point is, 80,000 registered voters in New York said, yeah, we want an investigation. That's really significant. Uh, almost 1,000 members in the architects and engineers list now. We are change groups everywhere. Truth Action, 11th, 30 month groups everywhere about 220 or so 